A whole food plant-based diet is the only way of eating that has ever actually shown the ability to reverse heart disease, which as I, as I mentioned, is the number one killer of men and women in the United States and globally. And the one who really sort of showed the potential for this is Dr. Dean Ornish, who I mentioned earlier. He is a professor of medicine at, U at UCSF. Uh, he's famous for this lifestyle heart trial. Um, and he was on the cover of Newsweek, actually, for his work in this area. And this was back in the 1980s to early 90s, where he took RCT stands for Randomized Controlled Trial. It's sort of considered the gold standard of medical research because he took 48 patients with moderate to severe CAD, which stands for coronary artery disease or heart disease, and he, random, he took half of them and put them on the American Heart Association diet. So they continued to receive care from the cardiologist and ate sort of an AHA, American Heart Association, healthy diet. The other half of the group he put on a whole food plant-based diet with other lifestyle changes like meeting in a group on a regular basis, so connecting with each other, um, thinking about stress reduction, and getting some moderate exercise. What I appreciated about his approach, because he has since gone on to replicate this intervention in other areas, including prostate cancer, including Alzheimer's, and he does not change the intervention. It is a multi-part intervention that includes not just a whole food plant-based diet, but these other aspects of movement, stress reduction, uh, and connection with each other. So his, uh, his goal was to determine the effect of comprehensive lifestyle change without the use of cholesterol uh, lowering drugs on heart disease and cardiac events. What you see here is that it was, there was one uh, endpoint at one year and then again at five years. So in the control group, the group that was on the AHA diet, what this represents is the percentage of stenosis or percentage of narrowing of their coronary arteries. And so you see here that on average, it increased over the five years from 40.7% up to 42.3%, up to 51.9%. This is very much what we expect, that the longer you live, the, more, the, the older you get, the more standard American dietary foods you eat, right? that your stenosis or your narrowing will gradually worsen over time. What was really neat to see is that in the intervention group, it's not that the percentage of stenosis went to zero because there is a certain amount of plaque that blocks the arteries that almost becomes sort of like scar tissue, right? So it's just not gonna go away. But there's also what's called soft plaque and that's really where there's possibility for, for improvement. And so what we actually see is that the average in the intervention group went from 41% blockage down to 38.5, down to 37.3%. So in total, the amount of narrowing improved by 8% over five years in the intervention group, and in contrast, it worsened by 28% in the control group. In terms of things that we think about, like actual cardiac events, the control group was about two and a half times more likely to experience a cardiac event than the experimental group over the five-year study. And events are defined as things like heart attack, uh, angioplasty, where they um, thread a catheter through and oftentimes will put a, a stent to help open up the arteries. Uh, things like cabbage or bypass surgery, uh, hot cardiac hospitalizations, and cardiac deaths. Again, the AHA or control group was two and a half times more likely to experience these complications or these events than the intervention group. And then what is also interesting is to note that it's not an all or nothing proposition. And it re this really is one of the major points that I want everyone to come away with, is that it, you don't have to go all the way. Whatever you can do at this stage, after this talk, in, the, in a healthier direction, let's start there. Because what we see is that even the least adherent group still had some benefit in, in terms of the stenosis. But the people who did the most had the most benefit. So I have seen the case where sometimes some people are not ready to make a big change, but they're ready to make a little one. And I'm like, I'll take it. And then they do that for a bit. I'm like, oh, that soon becomes easy. And now, now they're ready 
to make a bigger change. And so it's sort of meeting people where they're at at that season of their life and encouraging them in that space. This is Dr. Esselstyn. He has sort of added to this concept of reversal of heart disease through a plant-based diet through his own research. He's a surgeon at Cleveland Clinic and he worked with a small group of patients. This is the actual angiogram from one of the patients uh, that he worked with, the distal LAD, the left anterior descending artery. And you can see how it kind of gets a little narrow towards the end. This is called the Widowmaker artery for a reason. Well, three years later, after eating a plant-based diet, I don't know if you can tell, but it has opened up considerably. And so one of the books I highly recommend that you look at, especially if uh, heart disease affects a family member or yourself, is, this, is his book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. This is Dr. Kim Williams. I want, to, I want you also to realize that this is more mainstream than you might think. Dr. Kim Williams is the former president of the American College of Cardiology. He's currently a head of cardiology department at Rush University Medical Center. So he's very much in mainstream medicine. And when years ago he learned about the power of a whole food plant-based diet, just like me, he has now since come out and said things like this. Wouldn't it be a laudable goal of the American College of Cardiology to put ourselves out of business? That's not my quote, that is his quote. There are two kinds of cardiologists, vegans and those who haven't read the data. <laughs> so he is a huge proponent of a plant-based diet. He has adopted it himself. He is he's a big tennis player. Uh, he's actually a former professional tennis player and he has experienced the benefits in his own personal life he thought that his high cholesterol was genetic because it runs in the family. So if you have that narrative in your head, oh, I have this because it runs in the family, there is a saying, okay, genes loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. So yes, you may have a predisposition towards heart disease or um, towards stroke or towards some autoimmune but don't underestimate the power of radical lifestyle change to make it so that those genetics never fully express themselves. I have seen it again and again and again. And Dr. Williams had that aha moment where he realized that his genetic history did not determine his fate. He has since seen a significant drop in his cholesterol to optimal numbers and seen how lifestyle really uh, overcame his uh, genetic makeup. I saw this study when I, I, I still remember, I went to the Plantrition plant-based conference back in 2015 with my dad. And I remember Dr. Michael Greger, who is another very famous um, pioneer within this plant-based field, putting this study up on the screen. And I, my jaw just dropped because diabetic neuropathy is something that I had seen so much in clinic and felt so helpless to treat. I mean, I would, you know, I could offer them, you know, various medications like gabapentin or, um, you know, uh, amitriptyline, and maybe at best it could reduce their pain level or their discomfort level from like an eight to a five. It never fully eliminated it, and inevitably they would experience side effects. So when he showed me this study, where 21 patients with type two diabetes and neuropathy and an average age of 64 went to a 25-day residential program with a low-fat, high-fiber vegetarian diet, essentially a whole food plant-based diet of unrefined foods and conditioning exercise. Here were the results. Complete, not partial, complete 100% relief of neuropathy in 17 of 21 patients within four to 16 days. I had never seen that happen in one of my neuropathic patients. 17 out of 21 with no medication and just eating a healthy plant-based diet and getting some exercise. What was interesting and what I really appreciated about this is they followed up. Um, they followed up with these same 17 patients uh, four years later, four years later. And of the 17, all of them except one 
continued to have 100% relief of their neuropathy. And the one who had some partial relapse, it still was much better than, than original. It just wasn't complete. This only captures their improvements in neuropathy, but many came off diabetic medications, lost weight, lowered blood pressure, all those things that I showed you in the Hawaiian study from Dr. Shintani earlier. This is Jose. I just, this is a picture I just took on Wednesday, uh, no, Tuesday of this week. I said, Jose, I got, I've got to capture this because your story is just too good to tell. I just saw Jose in May. He was on the kidney transplant list with a creatinine, which is a measure of kidney function, of six over six. And normal creatinine is less than one. So his doctor basically said, you're, you're headed for transplant. On top of that, he had uncontrolled diabetes with a hemoglobin A1C, which is what's considered an average of your blood sugars for the last two to three months. 6.5% is the criteria for diagnosis of, of diabetes. His hemoglobin A1C had gotten as high as 10.9%, which is considered poor control. I saw Jose Tuesday. His creatinine was 2.04, down from 6.96 and where he was needing to be on the transplant list. It has improved remarkably. On top of that, his most recent hemoglobin A1C, remember what I said was the threshold for diagnosis, 6.5%? His hemoglobin A1C is 4.7%. On top of that, he was on 18 to 20 units of long-acting insulin with I think five to 10 units of short acting insulin with each meal when I saw him. Guess how much he's on now? Zero. So he has a, he has a hemoglobin A1C that is well below not only the threshold for diabetes, the threshold for prediabetes, with no medication, with kidney function that es essentially has gotten him off the, the kidney transplant list. And off two of his blood pressure medications that he came in on. You see why it's one of the best jobs I could have in the world. I basically have a front row seat to seeing these sort of miraculous transformations occur before my eyes on a weekly basis.